what a way for the first game to go in front of fans at Allegiant Stadium. Welcome to the John Gruden Press Conference Show. Kevin Bollinger alongside Eric Allen. And Eric, it was electric last night, wow. not only on the field, but just inside the stadium. The environment, incredible, right? From the, from, from the moment the doors opened up, the fans getting in there, uh, the stadium showed itself to be just an incredible uh, venue for just the Monday night football. The ESPN guys were there, but again, the game outshowed itself. They did an outstanding job. When the Raiders pick up a win like this, the way that they did it, how much can that carry over, not only to week two, but as we move through the entire season? Well, they can say that the ingredients are working, right? The, the hard work that you put in in the offseason and all of the changes that were made defensively with the coordinators and the coaches, the players all coming together and really making sure that what you were doing in the offseason is going to work. So now in the film rooms, in the meeting rooms, the coaches' voices are going to be that much louder now. The echo is going to be that much louder and more efficient to make sure that these guys understand that if you continue doing what we say, you're going to be okay. Well, John Gruden and his staff have studied the tape. We're getting ready to hear from the coach to talk about what he saw last night and to look ahead to this Sunday. You'll hear from head coach John Gruden coming up next on the John Gruden Press Conference Show. Stay with us. John Gruden Press Conference Live is brought to you by Coors Light, an official beer of Raider Nation, made to chill. Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights. Book now, only at Allegiant.com. John Gruden getting ready to step up to the podium to meet with the media after the Raiders' big overtime win against the Baltimore Ravens last night. Lots of things for him to talk about in terms of how things developed and what they're looking for as they get ready to make their trip across the country to take on the Steelers on Sunday. Yeah, Here's Coach Gruden. That I can. Uh, still not getting a full update on the injuries, but uh, we have some guys getting evaluated right now. How, uh, how, how, last night, as you reflect on it, think about it, how, how does it feel and what do you remember from it? Well, I've been watching the Steelers all day. It seems like a, a long time ago already. It was a great win for us, a great way to start the season. Proud of our team, our coaches, and at the same time, got a lot of respect for what we have to get done on a short week. We're still trying to get some uh, determination who's going to be available for us this week. So our preparation right now is a little bit cloudy. Is there any concern that some of it could be long-term injuries? Yeah, there is some concern. We've got some guys getting examined, uh, Gerald McCoy. Uh, Denzel Good, Marcus Mariota, to name a few. Uh, we'll have to have to see the official evaluation here shortly. John, um, obviously uh, the offensive line, there were a lot of changes, and there were some injuries uh, that you were dealing with yesterday. Um, and it's a tough front. Uh, they do a lot of different things. Um, how do you feel the offensive line played, and specifically Andre James and, and Alex? Uh, yeah, we were pleased. You know, we uh, have watched the Ravens all throughout the summer and for the last few weeks, and they have their way with a lot of teams, and uh, they did, they're a great defensive team, but we're happy with the initial game of, of our players. I thought J uh, Jermaine Illuminor came off the bench, did an unbelievable job for us, given the fact that he just got here. But I thought for the first time out, we did, a, did some good things against uh, some challenging looks and, and, and good players. How much of a test are, are the Steelers going to be for them? It seemed like a big part of their win was the pressure. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to be a challenge. They obviously have added Schobert and Melvin Ingram, a couple really good veteran players to go with T.J. Watt, Cam Hayward. They're well coached. Keith Butler does a great job. And they, they, they too, are unorthodox. They, they present a lot of different looks. And um, we have our work cut out for us on a short week. How important was it um, that Brian Edwards and Henry Ruggs got into things um, it was late in the game, but they both stepped up with big plays for their confidence and for the whole scheme of things. How important was that? Yeah, it was important. We've got to get uh, Zay Jones and Willie Sneed more involved as well. They're not doing a good enough job of that, but um, it w was important. And I thought uh, both those kids made big plays in the second half in particular. John, is there so anybody have... after watching the film that maybe from field level you didn't notice had a really good game? Try not to single out a lot of guys. You know, it was a team win. I thought uh, everybody had a hand in the victory. Kickers, coverage people, offense, defense, special teams. It was a collaborative effort, really. 
John, in the second half, obviously Derek got into a rhythm and, and like Vinny just said, found the receivers to get the, the outside guys more involved. It seemed like he started off kind of slow and sluggish. Was there anything you kind of put your finger on as to what led to that? And it seemed like there's some chemistry issues too with, with Derek. Well, I had a great opening drive. You know, we had a couple holding calls on running plays that put us behind in the down and distance. Then we had a botch center quarterback exchange. Uh, then we had a, a hard count. We were looking for a free play, and uh, they clearly are in the neutral zone. Uh, and Derek threw the ball down the middle late, thinking he had a free play, but they didn't call offsides on Baltimore. I thought it was clearly offsides, but uh, that wasn't out of rhythm. That was part of our game plan. We were taking a shot for a free play. We misfired on a couple throws. I thought he was high a couple times uncharacteristically, but. That's a good defense. They can uh, present some looks that you can't card up and really rehearse and practice against. And they are very talented. But uh, I give them credit for uh, you know, getting through the choppy water there at the beginning and playing great football. I think he completed 20 out of his last 23. Uh, defensively, two turnovers, three sacks. Got the Ravens off the field nine times out of 12 uh, third down. Uh, those are things that you've been talking about. Um, how good was it to, to see it happen on the field um, that they stepped up in that way? Yeah, it was definitely good. I mean, uh, progress is being made, and hopefully Yannick is, is not as seriously injured as, uh, you know, he, he possibly can be. We don't know the outcome yet. Losing McCoy is a, is a big loss to our leadership network and to our D-line. So I was pleased at the same time. Uh, Pittsburgh gives you no reason to rejoice. You got to move on and turn the page. We still have 16 regular season games to go, so we have a long way to long, long way to go in this journey. Uh, you said that uh, Jonathan Abrams on the cusp this year. What do you see from him last night <clears throat> when you watched the film? Well, you know what he um, showed up big time with some uh, range plays, open field tackling. Um, he's in the right spot. He was in a good place emotionally. I liked where his uh, concentration was from a down-to-down -down standpoint. I think he's really started to understand this defense, know what his role is in the defense, and unleashing his, his, his talent. So I thought a lot of things came together for him last night against a very difficult and unorthodox style of offense. You know, you're not going to see a lot of teams that play offense like that in this league. Coach, looking forward to Pittsburgh, what's your early evaluation on what T.J. Watt brings to that defense? I mean, You've seen him. I'm not going to uh, say anything you don't know or fans don't know. He just He's going to get a huge contract as one of the premier edge rushers in the business. You better account for him or you're in trouble. It's like every player we talked to last night was unanimously just thrilled that it was Zay that caught the, the game winner. What, what makes him such a beloved guy around here and how important is he? <laughs> I think I, I lead the league in, in Zay Jones' uh, cheers and chants. And, uh, he's just a great kid. He's such a hard-working player. i got to get him on the field more. You know, it's a competitive group of receivers. But uh, he just uh, he's such an energy source for us. He finishes everything. He's the first guy in here, the last guy to leave. He's always upbeat and positive. And um, I wish I was Zay Jones. John, heading out east for an early game in a short week, three big things there. Is there things you've learned over your career to maybe help that? Because that's, I mean, it's a clear disadvantage. No, you just try to adapt to the schedule. Do the best you can. We'll try to stay on a normal week's schedule. We'll have Wednesday's practice will be tomorrow. We'll modify it. Obviously, we'll not be in pads and, and not do a lot of physical contact this week because uh, of the short week. But we got to get our guys physically ready first, and we got to get familiarized with our opponent second because they're they're an outstanding football team. Cleve Farrell was a uh, scratch yesterday. Um, can you? Talk about the what? Not really. He's uh, been a having some back ailments, and um, his time's coming. He'll return to the lineup probably this week. Um, hopefully, he's feeling better and can get back to his form that he had uh, earlier last year, and his, that's his rookie season. You mentioned the uh, confidence in the kicker. Uh, when you have a kicker, you can trust as much as you can trust Carlson. How, how much does it kind of change strategy and make it easier to, to say, okay, let's just go get the field goal and win the game? I probably should let him know a little earlier, I guess. I. Uh, <laughs> I do have a lot of confidence in him. You know, we knew if we got the ball at the 40-yard line, the plus 40, he could wait, uh, make that kick and send it to overtime. And he did it to New Orleans last year in similar fashion. He kicked a long kick to make it a two-possession game. His kickoffs have been great. His field goal accuracy has been great. I think he's a Pro Bowl kicker. He broke Janikowski's scoring record for a reason. Uh, he's a reliable clutch kicker, and he's off to a great start. 
Coach, I'm impressed with you with guys like Denzel Perryman to come in on such short notice and really just really charge the defense. Yeah, I think he had uh, a good day on the stat sheet. We were pleased with his performance. He and Jermaine Illuminar just got here. They're just starting to make friends, and uh, they played critical roles on short notice. So did K.J. Wright. But that's what uh, pro football is all about. Great job by Richard Smith, our linebacker coach, and Tom Cable to get these guys ready to contribute. You mentioned uh, Marcus was, was injured, but I assume that was on the one play that he was in the game. And did that – was there more planned for him? Yeah. No, yeah. We have uh, – you know, we uh, – Lost a big part of our offense. Uh, hopefully, it's not going to linger on. You know, he missed the whole preseason with a quad strain. He strained it again last night. And the severity of that injury um, kept him out of the game. That's too bad as a 31-yard gain to really give us an element we haven't really had around here. Any more guys? All right. All right. Have a good day.